doesn't love a good scented candle in their home? Well, what's really great about this is that they're just as fun to make as they are to enjoy. So I'm going to show you how to make candles from beginning to end with this candle with essential oil kit from Pop Shop America. My name is Brittany Bly and I'm the founder of Pop Shop America. We have all kinds of crafts, DIYs, recipes, and cool craft kits that you can enjoy anytime. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this candle making kit. This is our most popular craft kit at Pop Shop America. This is the candle with essential oil kit. And this is exactly how it comes. So when you open it up, the first thing you're gonna see are some printed instructions right here. We'll just set those to the side because we're gonna go through all of the different techniques in this video. We've got this cute little bag full of goodies. So let's go ahead and open this up, see what's inside. We've got essential oils right here. All of them are labeled on the bottom with different scents. And we also have a dropper bottle right here that'll come in handy later. I've got some caution labels, which is just a really smart approach to being safe with your candles once you're burning them. I've got an array of gorgeous tiny gemstones that are sized perfectly for this project. I have some dried lavender, and I have some really cute chalkboard sticker labels. So let's keep digging and see what else we have in there. So underneath, we also have a bag of wax. This is 12 ounces of wax right here. And wait, there's more. Let's go ahead and pull everything else out and I'll set it to the side so you can see everything better. I've got down at the bottom of the box, wicks and popsicle sticks. I've got this mason jar also full of wax. This is about three ounces of wax. And if we open up this box right here, I have a whole bunch of candle vessels in here. So those are all the supplies that you need to make this candle project from beginning to end. You actually don't need anything else except for a heat source. There's a few different ways that you can melt your wax. So let's just walk through some different approaches. So we're gonna use our mason jar to melt our wax. That's always the easiest approach. Now, there's a couple of different things that we can do we could pour all of this into a microwave safe bowl and then we could microwave this for 30 seconds at a time stir every 30 seconds when you pull it out from the microwave put it back in for another 30 seconds until it's liquid until it's completely transparent we could also take a stock pot with just a very small amount of water at the bottom Place your mason jar right in there. Make sure that the water is nowhere near the top of the mason jar. Put this on a stove top on low and just stir it occasionally until that wax is melted. Now with either of these methods, we wanna be extremely careful that we're always keeping it on low. Never turn your heat to high. Never with the microwave, do intervals that are longer than 30 seconds. We always want to keep our wax as cool as possible for a few different reasons. One is that when we keep our candle wax low, it's going to cool faster. So the hotter we get our wax, the longer it's going to take for that wax to solidify, the longer we're going to be sitting there and just waiting to finish our candles. Another thing is that wax can actually burn at high temperatures. I've never actually seen it happen. It's never happened to me, but it can happen, so I don't want it to happen to you. So for safety and for speed, we're always gonna keep our wax on low. So the third method that we have right here is I'm using this wax pour that I have. Now this is not something that you need, this mason jar or even using a microwave is a much better method, but just for sake of you know video and purposes, like I wanna show you all of your options, so I'm gonna use this wax pourer. Now the reason that I don't recommend these wax pourers is this is huge, this doesn't fit in most of my cabinets. 
I don't use this for anything except for melting wax. This like is not helpful to have around the house unless you're gonna make candles all the time. If you make candles monthly, weekly, professionally, sure, having one of these is awesome. It's super convenient, but that's the only reason you would need this. Now to heat this wax, I'm doing the same method that I mentioned with the stove top with this mason jar. I have my heat on low and I'm just gonna wait for our wax to melt. I'm gonna stir it occasionally over that time. So here's a couple of vessels that I'm gonna use right here. These are about two ounce vessels, but I'm only gonna pour about 1.8 ounces of wax into them. So let me explain that. You see how all of these finished candles, you see how there's just a little bit of room at the top? We need that room for a couple of different reasons. One is that later on, when we get to this step, we're gonna pour essential oils into here and we're gonna to need to stir it thoroughly and completely. So we need room at the top to be able to stir those essential oils in. Another thing is that we always wanna leave a little bit of room so as we burn the candle, the wax isn't gonna pour over the side. It's gonna stay contained in that little vessel. So let's also get a couple of wicks ready, but we're not gonna place the wicks in the vessel yet. Now it's totally okay if you place the wick but the reason that I'm not gonna do it yet is that the wick is actually gonna move when we pour the liquid wax in. So I'm gonna get a couple of wicks ready, but I'm just gonna have them off to the side. Now I've got these little short wicks, which is perfect for this, but if you have longer wicks, all you need to do is just take your popsicle stick, you have your metal base facing the bottom, this is gonna go on the bottom of the vessel, you have your cotton wick at the top, now all you have to do is wind it around until the metal base can rest gently at the bottom of the glass vessel and your popsicle stick can rest along the surface of the candle vessel. So always check on your wax as you're burning it. Mine is already completely liquid. Once you have it liquid, make sure you remove it from the heat. Again, we always wanna keep our wax as cool as possible. That's for safety, that's for speed, that's to make sure that we don't burn the wax. So let me show you what this looks like. Hopefully you can see it down in there. Now it's kind of yellow, but it's gonna dry white, but it's completely transparent. It's not translucent, it's not buttery, it's completely transparent right now. Once you have your wax melted, this is only gonna be your space where you're gonna set your um, candle pourer down or you can set it back down on your stovetop in your pot, but we're not using this for any other purposes. Now, once you have your wax liquid, we can actually go ahead and pour. Now, anytime we're pouring wax, we wanna pour extremely slowly, very gently, leave a little bit of room at the top, like I mentioned before. The reason that we're pouring slowly and gently is because we wanna prevent any splashing along the sides. That's gonna help us make beautiful and professional looking candles. Then just set it back and now it's a waiting game. We're gonna place our wicks and we're not gonna take any other steps until we see some chemical changes in the wax. So I've got one wick in place just grab your popsicle stick and again, we're winding the top of the cotton wick around the popsicle stick until the metal base can rest gently across the bottom and the popsicle stick can rest along the top of the candle vessel surface. Now we want our wick to be in the dead center. We want it to be in the dead center on the bottom where the metal base is. We want it to be in the dead center on the top where we're actually gonna burn the candle wick. Now, it's totally okay. You might notice that the wick kind of bends a little bit. That's totally normal. We just wanna get it as close as possible. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna help the candle burn evenly. So imagine with one of these candles, imagine that our wick is too far off center. It's too close to the glass edge. What that's gonna do is it's actually going to put the glass at risk of breaking. It's gonna produce a lot of heat along one side Another thing is that the wax is gonna burn along that side, but not as much along the, as along the other side of the candle. And so you're gonna get a candle that's burning unevenly. You might not be able to use the whole thing. 
you have to kind of pay attention to it as you're burning it, you know, it can be a little bit problematic. So we want to get it as close to the center as possible. Now the type of wax that we want to use for this project, the type of wax that I have here, is actually an all natural soy wax. I highly recommend using a nice high grade soy wax. This is actually food safe, so it's totally safe to have all these items in your kitchen. If you end up using something later, for example, your mason jar, you can use that for meal prep. You can use that just um, for your sauces or leftovers, or you can make another candle with it, but all of it is safe to have in your kitchen. What I don't love, what I don't recommend, are some um, synthetic waxes, things like paraffin, which you have to be a little bit more careful with. They're not as safe for you to have in your home. They're not even as safe to have around in your house when you burn them because some of those things are not things that you're supposed to breathe. Same goes with your wicks. These wicks that we have here are all natural cotton wicks. Wood wicks, of course, are great too, but you wanna be careful with the supplies that you get. Make sure that it's safe to burn. Make sure that it's safe to breathe if you're planning on using these candles in your house. So again, at this point, it's just a waiting game. So what we're looking for is some changes in the wax. Anytime you make candles, wax solidifies from the bottom to the top. When it becomes solid, it's gonna become opaque. So that's what we're looking for. We're not gonna take any next steps until we see the bottom of this wax start to become opaque, it's gonna to start to look white. It's gonna change its color right before our very eyes. Now again, I have about uh, four ounces of wax total right here, but you might have remembered me mention that this is about three ounces of wax right here. Well, there's another really cool thing that happens when you go from a solid to a liquid, which this is gonna reduce in volume as you melt it. So with a microwave safe bowl, you could actually pour all of your wax in there or however much depending on the size of your bowl. If you're using your mason jar and you're starting with those three ounces, you might wanna add a little bit as you go. As it becomes liquid, the volume starts to reduce. You have a little bit more room in your mason jar. And so you can continue to add wax until it's basically about this full. I would always recommend leaving about an inch at the top that's gonna make it easier to pour, it's gonna make it easier to stir as you're melting it. All of those different things are really helpful you know, in your process of candle making. So once we have our wax in here, and again, it's just the waiting game, you can start to think about your essential oils, think about the blends that you wanna choose. You could even start to prep your essential oils like I'm gonna do right now. So I've got these essential oils right here. Let's see what scents we have. We've got lavender, peppermint, and eucalyptus. Definitely some of the most popular scents, and they all work really well together. And all of them together are actually very relaxing. Now what's really cool is that essential oils are actually broken down into three distinct categories. There's top notes, middle notes, and base notes. Top notes are things that hit your scent palette first, things like lemon, citrusy, things that have that burst of scent that you notice right away, but they actually linger for the shortest amount of time. Versus base notes, which are things that are like amber or sandalwood, those, of course, stay for a long time in your scent palette, but they're quite subtle when you first smell them. So they actually, they work really well together when you start to blend them together. In the middle, you have things that are called heart notes or middle notes. Those are things like your herbs or your florals. So for example, my lavender would be a really great example of a middle note. Those kind of have properties of both top notes and base notes. They're kind of right in the middle. They actually have like a, a medium molecule size. Top notes have the smallest molecule size. Base notes have the largest molecule size. Again, all of them, when you start to blend them together, that's what makes a really cool, complex scent that you notice right away. It has those punchy elements, but it also lingers on the palate, lingers in the nose for quite some time. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up all of my bottles of essential oils. Let's make sure we know which one's which. So I've got my lavender right here. I'm actually gonna organize them 
top note, middle note, bass note. I'm gonna organize them just so I can remember what's what. So eucalyptus for me, that's a bass note. Peppermint, that's gonna be more of a middle note, but it's gonna be kind of on the bass note side. Lavender, right in the middle, middle note. Now, if you have any trouble getting these bottles open, you could just grab a pair of scissors, place it right underneath that little plastic insert, and we'll just pop that little guy out. Now I have this open bottle of essential oils, so anytime we have something like that, we always wanna be so careful. These essential oils are very high grade, that's why they're so tiny. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna use this dropper bottle with this little dropper lid. Now let me show you what I'm doing. Let's just get this right front and center. Now all of these bottles are interchangeable, so I'm gonna take a bunch of drops of the lavender. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make my own custom blend. So I've squeezed some lavender into my empty bottle. Now before I move on, let's make sure to close this up. Always keep your essential oils closed when you're not using them. They are very high grade. We don't wanna drop them directly to the skin. And we wanna be very careful to not spill them we need them for our candles. So with peppermint, I'm gonna use a lot less than the lavender. So now I've got that lid off. Place that lid to the side. I've got my dropper bottle right here. And let's just add the tiniest little bit of peppermint into our custom blend just a tiny bit. Now we'll close up this peppermint and let's set that to the side and let's add our third scent, eucalyptus. We actually have tons of different essential oil recipes that you can find on the blog and that will be linked in the description below. Now all of these essential oils that we've been talking about, again, are high grade essential oils. They are not fragrance oils. Fragrance oils are very popular in candle making. I do not love them personally. They are chemical in nature. They're not natural. And for me, they don't smell quite as good. They actually make me feel kind of gross when I smell them. So that's why I don't use them personally. Fragrance oils are absolutely fine, but one thing you're gonna notice with fragrance oils, you probably volume wise are gonna be adding, you know, a fair amount. It's gonna be bigger in volume than what I'm adding here. And you can find all kinds of unusual scents, like things like ocean scent, or even strawberry, or things that you would never find in essential oil form. But for things, if, if you like something that's very natural, things like sandalwood, rose, lavender, then essential oils are definitely the way to go. And so I'm just waiting to see the candle wax start to become opaque at the bottom. When I'm waiting for my wax to solidify, I'll often crouch down really low and look at it dead on, because again, it does always solidify from the bottom to the top. And so if you take a look at these candles right here, you can see that the whole thing is now, instead of transparent, it's quite translucent. So it's becoming milkier. It's not as clear, it's not as see-through. But at the bottom, it's starting to become even more opaque or even, even more milky at the bottom. This is how we want it to look when we drop the essential oils. So this is ready, ready for our essential oils. So we made our custom blend. So let's go ahead and just drop it on in. Now the amount of essential oils that you add can vary based on the quality and based on the size of your candle. So it's tough to say, you know, how much to use for any given project. So what we, what we wanna do is just kind of smell for what we like and go from there. For a candle this size, again, we're working with two ounce candles. We wanna consider maybe around 20 drops of high grade essential oils and probably not any more than that. Of course, you can add a little bit more if you like you just kind of have to smell it as you go. 
Now, the reason that we add essential oils as this wax is cooling and we never add them sooner, if we add the essential oils when the wax is too hot, then the, all of the essential oils will burn off right when we add them to the candle. They won't burn when we're melting the candle, when we light the candle later, when we actually want to use the candle. Essential oils burn at a slightly lower temperature than the wax, and they have to, so let's just think about that. So if essential oils didn't burn at a lower temperature than wax, we wouldn't be able to smell them at all. We want to be able to smell them as we light the candle, as we use the candle in our home, so they absolutely have to burn at a lower temperature than the wax. So if the wax is too hot, then all of that essential oil is gonna be released right there in the making process instead of when we're actually using the candle later. If we don't stir the essential oils into the wax and they pool in a certain area, you're gonna actually see them floating on the surface of your candle once the wax solidifies. Now it happens sometimes it's totally okay. If it happens to you, remelt a little bit more wax, add a little bit more wax at the top to help seal in those essential oils that didn't get mixed in thoroughly. Now once we have our essential oils mixed into our wax, again, it's just a waiting game. Now we're gonna wait for a different change and then we're gonna add all of our cute decorations to the top of the candle. Now that our candles are to the point where the whole thing is nice and milky, it's completely opaque, but just slightly shiny on the top, now we can add our decorations to the top. So let's just flip around and see what we got. I know there's some gemstones right here. That would be really fun to use. You could consider jasmine, marigold, rose petals, lavender, cornflowers, chamomile. There's so many different options. You could put tiny seashells in there. I'm going to start with some gemstones but we need to wait for it to be in this phase to look this way, for it to be the right time to add them so that they don't sink to the bottom. Now with gemstones, we never wanna to add too many. So about two is probably all I wanna add for something this size. We need for the candle to have plenty of space for the wick to burn and melt. What we should never do is place too many things on the surface of the candles. So I've got some gemstones on this one. And how about we use these jasmine buds on the other one? That'll look really pretty. Of course, you can mix and match. You can add both gemstones and flowers. You can add lots of different types of flowers. There's no wrong way to do this. It's just whatever you think looks pretty. So I'll take these jasmine buds and just press a few down. One more. Great, and so once we have them in the place that we like, just take my hand and just gently press it into the wax. I can even hold the wick in place, just like I held the wick in place when I was stirring in the essential oils. I can hold my wick in place when I'm pressing the flowers into the surface. And now we're completely done with these candles, but there's one more thing that we have to do before they're ready. We have to wait for the wax to solidify completely and begin to cure. We should never burn these candles. We should never touch the wick in the first 24 hours. Now, if I wait 24 hours, then I could burn these candles, but I could wait even longer and then my candle will be extra special. If you have the patience to wait two full weeks, that's how long it takes for your wax and your essential oils to cure. Basically, they'll continue to blend, they'll, compl they'll completely merge, and then you get the most optimum scented candle that you can, but you have to wait two full weeks. If you don't have the patience for that, it's totally okay. Just wait 24 hours for it to completely set before you touch the wick, before you remove the popsicle stick, or before you burn it. Now the reason that you don't want to trim the wick early is the wick will it'll actually move while it's still in the wax. The wax is not completely set. So what you're gonna see is some funneling happening around the wick. 
If that happens, all you need to do is add just a little bit more wax, just remelt some wax, add a little bit more, leave it untouched for a full 24 hours. Once it's been 24 hours and you have a candle like this, you will want to trim the wick before you burn it. Wicks should always be about a quarter of an inch tall, never taller, never shorter, because this is gonna give us the most control over the flame. If we have a wick that's really tall, it's gonna make the flame a whole lot bigger, it's gonna produce more smoke, it's, it's gonna burn the wax unevenly. Keeping a short wick and trimming the wick as we go helps keep the flame nice and small, it keeps it controlled, it's a lot safer and it's a lot easier to manage. You also get more burn time with your candles. Now we've covered all of the basics of candle making so that you can make your own candles with essential oils. If you wanna grab this kit right now, it's available at popshopamerica.com where you can get all of the supplies you see here. If you're ready for more cool tutorials like this, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications. My name is Brittany Bly. I'm the founder of Pop Shop America, and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.